Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Navigate Resurrection. Well, we finally made it past the guards over here. I think we did a whole bunch of various things in the last episode. Now, we can go into this temple and get the uh, goblet that those crones wanted. Where's a goblet, right? Defile the temple. Ask you to travel to a druid temple in the north, ransack it, and return with a golden goblet. Sure thing. But of course, first, we need to explore around the outside, because that's how I do things. And for those who weren't here before, when we got here, the place seemed unusually quiet. And, in our words, reeks of an ambush. The druids of the temple have created and nursed a beautiful grove of oak trees. They are well cared for, and walking amongst them is, even considering the circumstances, quite peaceful. As you walk under the leafy cover of one of the larger specimens, you notice that there is a bunch of mistletoe growing on a low branch. Mm. We can take that. Why not? A shaft has been dug into the rich brown earth here, sloping at an angle into the earth. Rough stone steps have been set in into the ground, mm. making it easy for you to descend. We may, at some point, but not yet. Uh, mm. more mistletoe. Huh. You walk out onto the short dock. You aren't sure why it was placed here. There are no boats in sight and no sign that any are ever here. When you reach the end, you notice that the water beneath you is unusually dark and still. As you look at it, it starts to bubble, only a little at first, then harder and harder until the lake is churning beneath you. This is pretty odd. Do you stay here? I say no! You run off the dock as the bubbling water starts to spray up onto the wood. When you reach a safety of solid ground, the water returns to its dark, still state. We could walk into it, but it sounds like a s that would be a stupid idea. Especially considering what it did just then. But for now, we are exploring around this place. Because that's how I do things. Oh dear. You stand at the edge of a large trench filled with bones and bodies. They were all thrown in here, largely intact and left to rot. Each died of a single wound, delivered with a very sharp knife. They must have been sacrificed in the temple. The corpses are mainly sheep and cattle. Deeper in the pile, however, you see some bones that look different. At least one of the skulls looks human. The stench of the death pit is overwhelming. You can't bring yourself to get any closer. As you back away, you start to feel extremely ill. Right. Should not have moved up to the pit of horrible, horrible death. Alright, that's everything there. That's the shrine in the center, I'm guessing. We'll go there last. After we look through all the huts here. Doesn't appear to be much. There's a bit of woad. Bronze fibulae. Nothing else of use in there. Quite a grove over here. Huge. And that's the shrine up there. Let's see. Nothing in here. Mushrooms, but we don't need those. There should be people here. But why are they not? Hey, Augustus level. Gloves of the Fey? Plus one to herb craft. Sure. Uh, ceremonial dagger, silver... This is actually useful stuff. Uh, I can't remember. Who was our herbalist? Yeah, he was the herbalist. Okay. So you can wear the gloves of the Fey. You were carrying the herbs. Silver bracelet to you. You can wear it. And this is going to be sold. Let's see. More druids robes! These are... They can't... I'm starting to think maybe these druid robes aren't actually magical and we should just sell them. I mean, I'm still going to hold on to that for her, but still. I'm just starting to think that it's not as magical as I thought it might have been. Apples, meat, bread. Ooh, 
iron studded armor and fine leather armor mistletoe healing herbs actually you should be holding on to some mistletoe yeah Let's see in here more druids robes and a leather sling okay we already they already all have leather slings okay that leather sling can be sold That's everything out there, which only leads to the shrine here. Huh. Before we go in, I want to take a look at what's below here. What's under these steps. Wait, someone leveled up, I remember. Augustus leveled up! Yes, now that we have seven points, uh... You know what? You should probably put a point in endurance at this point, I think. Yeah. Yeah, put a point... Mm. No. No, put a point in tool use. The more we get, the better. Alright. Uh, no... Oh! Octavius leveled up? When did that happen? Okay, point in war circle. Now he will be able to cast Quicksilver Feet next chance we get. When, when we get him trained. And Rian is not. Okay. I'm going to save before I go in there. Alright, let's see here. Oh, jeez! Ah, oh, there's Brigantes under here. Very strong Brigantes. Should've known they'd be under here. Create light. Or fur. Sack of grain. These basically look like they're stores and little more. That's uh this pit hangs heavy with thick white mists. It's icy and wet, the floor is slick, and it's hard to see past a few feet. As you move carefully down the ledge, you notice that some of the wisps of mist seem more solid than the others. Spirits. As I should have expected. Phew! It's freezing down here! Even with the icy cold, the air still has the mild scent of decay. There must be corpses down here. And I'm guessing they're the kind that move. You slide the stone lid away from the coffin, revealing the decomposed remains of some druid. There's nothing of value with the body. You slide back the lid. No need to let the smell get any worse. It's probably the same with all of them. Try to pick the lock. Can't pick the lock. Okay then. Blessing pool. At the center of this beautiful tiled chamber you find a pool. It's a smooth, perfectly round basin about three feet in diameter. The water is perfectly clear and about an inch deep. Around the lip of the pool are delicate mosaics. The first depicts a druid standing at the edge of the pool. The second so shows the same druid dipping his staff into the water. The third shows him sta showing the staff aloft. Perhaps you're supposed to dip one of your weapons into the water. You know what, I want to try one of these blessing pools. Let me just save first. Alright, let's see here. You dip your blade into the water, hoping for a blessing of some sort. Nothing happens. The magic of this place probably doesn't work for the Romans. Wah, 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 is about all I can think. Oh well. Ooh, here's a lot of stuff. Let's see. Herbs, first aid kit, mortar and pestle, don't need that, papyrus sheets, aha, I thought there might be one. Searching through the jars for hidden goodies, you find a small red button set in the wall. It's very strange, it's not like the Britannians to create something like this. Maybe they had fairy help. Well, let's push the button. You feel a slight vibration coming from the floor. No idea what that did. Let's 
see. Only one place left to go. Druids are said to be the Britannians' holy people and chief repositories of learning. They are the storehouses for their history, stories, rituals, and religious lore. However, they primarily have an oral tradition. The knowledge is passed on by word of mouth, memorized during long years in seclusion in holes like this. That is why it's so strange to find a library down here. The room contains long rolls of shelves filled with vellum and papyrus scrolls. You pull one out and look at it. It's a record of tribal chieftains from centuries past. You look at another. It's about the death of some savage non-entity called Kukuthlain. Whatever. It's an impressive library filled with native trivia. Still, there are a lot of scrolls down here. If you look carefully, you might find something interesting. Look carefully, we shall. Nothing. Nothing. You look at the interesting... You look at an interesting looking vellum scroll. It's on magical barriers. There are two classes of magical barriers. One sears people passing through it. The other prevents all passage altogether. A certain craft circle spell will destroy magical barriers. There is also an item called a piercing crystal which can do the same thing. And a darts of ice scroll. Excellent. Nothing else there it looks like. Ah, more. Let's see here. Among a jumble of crumbling papyrus records, you notice an illuminated vellum scroll, which is still in nice condition. The scroll contains a recipe, which has been filtered through the unhinged brain of the savage who transcribed it. Through careful inspection and filtering out of the more bizarre rantings, you make some sense of it. You manage to learn how to make woad, as if any Roman would ever use that barbarian concoction. Call beast. Nothing there. No. Haste. No, and no. Aha! Let's see, cast and create light. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, there's a pit down there that we don't need to go to. Warning, dangerous portal, high risk of hostile devouring. Let's step in! Where are we? Oh, jeez. Oh, dear. We did this wrong. Well, that could have gone better. You know what? Let's go through there later. Actually, before we do, I want to... I want to actually look at, see if we can go into the middle here and see what's going on in here. Alright, let's see what's on this aisle here. You step off the bridge and into the temple proper. It's an ancient place, perhaps even older than the Empire itself. To either side are two rows of huge stone pillars of an unusual, almost Greek design. The weight of the centuries is slowly crumbling them. At the far end you can see the altar, surrounded by small offerings. As you enter, you start to feel ill. Your stomachs feel like they're full of gravel, and your knees and ankles start to wobble under your weight. You start to debate whether it's safe to go on. Then you hear a battle roar behind you. You look and see several Brigantes warriors charging from behind. You draw your blades, turn, and hear roars from behind you again. There were more warriors hiding behind the pillars. You're surrounded. You're going to have to fight your way out. You can't cast this spell when foes are in sight. It takes too long to cast. Well, great. Let's fight them as much as we can. Okay, we should have cast it when they weren't anywhere near us. Because we are now in huge trouble. In fact, we might actually die. Or at least take heavy damage. Yes. We will do what we can. Huh. Oh, jeez. Uh, healing? Oh boy. Another mild healing spell. 
You need to cast another shit. Mine's Sophia. That was the best he could do, eh? Alright. Our mage is alive. And he's dead. Things are now rapidly going downhill. I am doing what I can to try and keep people alive, but it won't last forever. Especially since two of them and we are going to die here. Especially with everyone and everything charging in on us. Good god, there's a lot. Okay, let's try this again, but we'll cast the spell first. Beast Ceremony! Wait. You can cast Lansafa- Actually, no. Call aid. A little bit of help would be useful. Mild healing on her. And you cast that lance of fire at that. Yes. You can stand on that side. You can cast another lance of fire. There, that one's dead. Thank you for the assistance. We are doing what we can. As much as we can. You... You don't need to do very much. Yeah, that one's dead. Ow. Another lance of fire. No, no, no. No. There. Lance of fire. Come on, we can kill this. We can do this. With the assistance of the spell we cast, we can kill these guys. Thank you for the aid, O oh Lizard. Yes, we can definitely kill them this way. There we are! Alright, you cast another lance of fire. There we are. That's several dead. We'll pick up the various loot later. There's still more. Like that druid. That other druid. Charge! Another lance of fire. Is that the best you got? Yeah, that one's dead. That thing is dead. That thing is dead. Ah, another one. Oh dear. We have many guards coming now. Come on, we can kill them. Aha! Come on, that's the fire! This battle is quite... is going surprisingly well now, actually. Once we prepared and came from the correct direction, instead of getting completely overwhelmed from all sides all at once, this went well. 
Ooh. What is that? Ambrosia gives divine protection. That sounds incredibly useful. There's so much loot here that we could use. Ah, jeez. And Sapphire! You need to cast a healing spell on him! And Sapphire! There we are, very nice. Mild healing. Ah, Julius was the one who leveled up. Excellent! Come on, come on, we can kill these guys. You may almost be out of energy, but we've got these guys dead. Come on, lance of fire. There we are. Ha <laughs> ha. Excellent. I don't think there's many left alive now. All right. That's a lot of dead. So much loot around here to pick up, but first let's take a look at this place. As you get closer to the altar, you see that the locals have left a number of offerings around it. You see simple crafts, food, and other useful portable items. As you get closer, the sickness you're feeling increases. You start to feel woozy, and you're finding yourself not so much marching forward as staggering. Purge Venom! Actually, we should probably go outside and rest. Void Crystal Wand of Karanos. When you reach the altar, the waves of sickness that have been buffeting you slowly fade. You've broken through. The dark magic of this place can't affect you anymore. You're free to look around. The altar itself is marble, beautifully cut and polished. It has a number of pastoral scenes and views of lakes and rivers etched in its sides. Brigantia must be the goddess of farming or sailors or something along those lines. In contrast with the peaceful images on the stone, the altar still has smears of dried blood on it from the last sacrifice. It would seem that even benevolent goddesses need their occasional ration of gore. You would expect that the altar would have some sort of enchantment on it, repelling you or making you feel bad or something like that. No such thing is apparent. It's just stone. Simple stone. However, all, the, all of the altar's ceremonial trappings have been removed. No knives, no goblets, nothing. When the druids saw that you were coming, they must have spirited it all to safety. Which means we do need to go down there. What is a void crystal? Clouds of night. I don't know what that is. Alright. Uh, Wand of Karanos. What does that do? Aura of Karanos. No idea what that is any either. Well, let's take what loot we can. Ooh, actually... Ah, uh, we can't get it. Ah, uh, Dexterity. Yeah, I did want to get a point in Dexterity, so there. Point in Dexterity! Julius is now more dexterous. The others can't get anything yet. Alright, plenty of loot around here that we can pick up. Plenty of stuff dropped. Steel studded armor. Really? Can any of you carry the- thank you. Actually, can you carry this? Yes. Actually, I just realized you're missing a cloak, aren't you? No, 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 you're wearing a cloak. Okay. Uh, is there anything else over here? Another iron studded armor and... An Pick up that sword! Thank you. Alright, uh, I am going to quickly run to... Actually, we don't have time to go underneath and finish this off. It's the end of the episode. It's been a half hour, so... Alright, first things first, I am going to sell all of this stuff I have here, because I have to. I can't carry it all. Next episode we are going to finish... Well... Yeah, next episode we're going to finish off what we were doing there. Oh! Oh, we can't buy. I mean, sell. Okay. Alright. We gotta run to the west to sell all the stuff we got. Come on, come on. 
A long, long trip, but we made it. Alright, alright. I will trade with you. We have many things to sell. Let's see. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Sling. Armor, armor, armor. And fibulae, fibulae. Void crystal will hold on to, because I don't know what this clouds of night is. Let's see. Sword armor, armor. Sword armor. Nothing else. Uh, yeah. Armor, and... Armor, armor. Alright. 3,632 gold. Very, very nice. That done, I'm just going to move over near the area so that I can remember where I'm going to come back in in the next episode, because, yeah, I've been recording for a while now. Probably won't be reco- If you remember about seven episodes ago, I mentioned how I record things. That last episode and this episode were pretty much all recorded in the same day. Uh, May 10th, specifically, so... Judge by that how long ahead <laughs> I have a backlog. Uh, that said, uh, next episode, yeah, we'll f probably find the goblet somewhere under there. Till then, I am Chesok44, that is Julius Augustus Septimus Octavius and Rion. This has been another Gate Resurrection Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.